Good evening and welcome to the San Antonio Public Library's main branch downtown, main library, for the second annual Holocaust Learn and Remember, an event that was put together and actually the brainchild of Ramiro Salazar, who you'll meet in a few minutes, the executive director of the San Antonio Public Library, over a breakfast he and I had about two years ago. Um, he asked me if there was any event that commemorated Holocaust remembrance. I talked to him about Yom HaShoah, which uh, being a part of the Jewish community, we commemorated yesterday at a, at a somber service at Temple Bethel last night. Uh, but I told him that I didn't know of really any community-wide event. Uh, Ramiro feeling that the story of the Holocaust um, as it pertains to Jews and other victims is an important story to tell to the entire community. Um, that was the impetus for creating this event called Holocaust Learn and Remember. Last year, we introduced this event with the help of the mayor of San Antonio, Julian Castro, and we had a month-long worth of events throughout the 25 branches of the San Antonio Public Library System, and we had thousands of people come to see a photo exhibit that was at this library, as well as see smaller exhibits and listen to talks from both survivors and, and other community leaders around the branches around the city of San Antonio. Uh, the event was so successful, in fact, last year that we decided to make it an annual event, so you all are part of launching the, the second um, version of this event called Learn and Remember. So just a few things to point out. One is um, we have a group of people that helped make this really event possible. Um, like I tell you, it was an idea that Ramiro had and he and I discussed it, but we've had great partnerships with the San Antonio Public Library Foundation and Tracy's here. We have uh, partners from the Jewish Federation. Ronit is here with us. Uh, you'll hear in a few minutes from Francesca Garrett. She's the executive director of the Holocaust Memorial Museum of San Antonio. Um, another important player in this market. Last year, um, for those of you that were around, you may have remembered that the Mazal Holocaust Library was our partner. This year, they, they were replaced by the Holocaust Memorial Museum for one simple reason. The Mazal Holocaust Library has now uh, left in the San, San Antonio and has taken a more global uh, reach approach and they are now part of the University of Colorado in Boulder. Uh, part of the collection is at the Texas A&M University here in San Antonio, the San Antonio campus. Part of it is at an upcoming uh, charter school that's opening this fall called the Anne Frank Inspire Academy that will be on Bandera Road near 1604, which is a uh, middle school. And part of the collection, which we'll discuss and, and you'll see a part of, is actually at our own Holocaust Memorial Museum here in San Antonio, and Francesco will tell you about that. So. Um, last night I gave a talk about an uncle of mine who is a Holocaust survivor. So one thing that I realized about the Holocaust being such a heavy subject is that there are a lot of people, Jewish and not Jewish, that don't volunteer to want to learn about it. But it's such an important topic that it actually, I think, can strengthen the relationship that people have with each other. And that's why I'm proud and honored to work on this with my friends from the Public Library, from the Library Foundation, as well as from the Jewish community. And I encourage you to learn as much as you can. That's why we call this Learn and Remember. You'll pick up a postcard on your way out. There's a series of events throughout the month. They'll all be listed on the website. Um, but I'd like to now introduce you to you know, in my mind, in my eyes, the person who made this possible, Ramiro Salazar, the executive director of the San Antonio Public Library. Ramiro. Uh, thank you, Howie. Howie, you were too generous with uh, uh, giving me credit for, uh, for this program. It, it actually, yes, you and I kind of talked, uh, talked about it, and we both kind of gave it some life, and, and from there took off when we approached uh, other of our partners, and so you deserve as much as the credit as, as I do, and others that have worked very hard. Um, but I do want to, I wanted to do a couple of things in, in, as part of my speaking to you. First of all, as the director of the San Antonio Public Library, library I want to extend to all of you a very warm welcome uh, to your library. 
Uh, and I'll talk very briefly in a few minutes about the importance of libraries with this kind, this kinds of uh, events and opportunities for a public discourse. Uh, but I do want to acknowledge our partners, and not only Howie, uh, who's worked very hard as part of the planning group, uh, but also our partnership with the uh, uh, Holocaust Memorial Museum and uh, and and all our friends at the at the at the museum, uh, the San Antonio Public Library Foundation for uh, for their support, uh, Francesca Garrett also for uh, she's relatively new but she's the executive director of the uh, Holocaust M Memorial Museum for uh, embracing this opportunity and for uh, for your support. We also had an opportunity to partner with uh, the city executives of San Antonio and actually had a site visit. Uh, I think the more we talk about what happened um, with the Holocaust, the more we will grow from that and the more powerful we can be to continue to talk about the message of tolerance. Um, and. So what I wanted to say is that I think libraries play a very important role. And the role that we play is to provide opportunities to educate and to enlighten the communities that we serve about uh, experiences and tra tra tragedies such as the Holocaust that impacted millions of people. And, and, that, and that we need to learn from that lesson and that libraries need to to carry that message, to educate, uh, because we, we need to really teach and practice tolerance. And it's the intolerance that leads to this kind of um, terrible experiences. And even today, you read in the news where uh, that there's still a lot of intolerance, and it hasn't changed. Uh, there has been some changes, but it, it hasn't gone away. Let me re rephrase it. Uh, it hasn't gone away. And so there's a lot of work to be done and uh, through my experience in Dallas, starting in Dallas with the Jewish community, I, I, I really uh, felt that I had a role as director of whatever library I was leading to, uh, to promote and encourage and offer programs, again, that, uh, that help in educate and enlighten communities. Because again, we all need to t stand up and, and do something about it. And uh, so we're doing our part um, in partnering and uh, bringing this program to you. So, it, so with that, I want to say that I'm very proud to be part of this initiative and that this is the second year and I'm also proud of that, Howie, that we make the commitment to continue and we will make, offer this uh, opportunity every year to follow uh, because again we, we need to continue that work of teaching and educating tolerance in this community. So thank you. Uh, next I'd like to invite somebody up here who's new to San Antonio but not new to the game of causes around our country. Ronit Sherwin recently moved to San Antonio and is now the CEO of the Jewish Federation of San Antonio. Ronit. Good evening. My name is Ronit Sherwin, as Howie just introduced me, and I'm the CEO of the Jewish Federation of San Antonio. The Jewish Federation, for those of you who are not familiar, is the umbrella organization of the Jewish community, serving as a convener on issues of import to the Jewish community, as well as raising funds to support Jewish organizations and programs, such as Jewish Family Services, the Jewish Community Center, the Community Relations Council, that works across the larger San Antonio community on issues having to do with multi-faith multi issues, as well as humanitarian efforts. It is an honor for me to claim the Holocaust Memorial Museum as a program of the Jewish Federation. The Holocaust Memorial Museum is more than a museum. It is a dynamic resource that teaches our community not only about the past, but how we move forward into the future with respect and dignity for all humanity. Today, as you know, commemorates Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day. This is, per is a particularly somber and painful day for the Jewish people, remembering the tragedy of over four million Jews who lost their lives in the Holocaust. In addition, many other minority groups were singled out and murdered with equal hate. Homosexuals, 
gypsies, disabled individuals, and others were killed for no other reason than their differences. This loss of life was senseless and unjust. And there are no words or museums or memorials to express the enormity of what was lost. But we are here today to remember, and we as the Jewish community are obligated to remember all the lives that were lost, Jewish and non-Jewish. We read in the Torah, also known as the Bible, the Old Testament, in the, book of Deuteron in the book of Deuteronomy, the following. For God does justice for the parentless and the widowed and loves the stranger, providing them with food and clothing. So, so, so shall you love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. The Jewish people take this not as a suggestion, but as an obligation. We Jews were strangers in a strange land. We know what it means to feel, to feel different and to be different. Therefore, we are commanded to always love the stranger, those who are marginalized, those on the outskirts of society. This is our obligation. This is precisely why education is so valued in the Jewish tradition. We need to learn from our own history and apply it to the future. We are never too far from the past to learn from it. We actually treat the past not simply as history, but as a memory of where we once dwelt. Tonight, in partnership with the Public Library, the Public Library Foundation, the Jewish Federation of San Antonio, the great man Howie Nestel, we kick off Learn and Remember. And I thank our partners for their commitment to this tremendous program. It is critical to building a civilized society that we learn from the Holocaust and that, as we say in Jewish tradition, we never forget. I want to conclude my remarks by sharing another piece of Jewish wisdom with you. The Talmud is a great Jewish text dating back to 2000 BCE that is full of Jewish teachings and arguments over Jewish law. One such <coughs> teaching commands us as parents to teach our children to swim. This may seem a bit strange to find such emphasis on a recreational sport, but the true meaning of this imperative is, of this imperative is that of survival. Swimming is used as a metaphor for a survival skill. We are obligated to teach our children the skills they need to survive in the world. And unfortunately, our world is still yet to be perfected, and we need to continue to teach them against hate and discrimination. At the same time, we are here tonight as a testament of, to survival. Thank you again to all of our partners and for making this event happen, and may we go from strength to strength. Thank you. Thank you, Ronit. Um, this may be the last time you see me up here because I'll introduce the last speaker. But before I do, I want to thank a couple of other people. I know I mentioned uh, Tracy Bennett earlier from the San Antonio Public Library Foundation. Uh, but um, I know Lacey Fisher, who's not here with us tonight. She's worked very hard both on this year's event and last year's event. She recently had a baby. Uh, Joseph Marks and Joel Bangle ba Bangalin. There you go. I knew I was going to mess it up back there. Uh, thank you. And then. Uh, thank you all for thanking me, but I want to turn around and thank Scott Sagard, who's here from Sharkmatic, who's from my team, that worked on both last year's branding and this year's branding and the website. And then uh, Jordan Wimberly, who's right here, who's also worked on the project, and then two other people that we still have at the office that were uploading videos at the last minute, so they stayed back. So thank you to my Sharkmatic crew that, that are here. Um, the last person I want to bring up is uh, Francesca Garrett. She's the executive director of the Memorial Museum of San Antonio, Memor Holocaust Memorial Museum of San Antonio, of the Jewish Federation. Um, and you know, I haven't had a chance to tell Francesca this. She knows I'm very impressed with her skills and her knowledge. But uh, you're actually one of my heroes here locally. Um, it, it's such a tough subject, and I've been volunteering and working on both the Mazal Holocaust Library project for 10 years and a few other Holocaust-related projects. And it, I don't know how you and Juana, who, who also works on this, how, do you, how you guys get through it. I mean, it's, it's admirable that you guys do this kind of work. I know it's not for the pay, you know, but um, I admire you, continue the work, because without you all, I mean, we couldn't put on these kinds of events. So uh, without further ado, Francesca Garrett. Thank you for that incredible introduction. Um, 
As has been mentioned tonight, I have the incredible honor of serving as the Executive Director of the Holocaust Memorial Museum of the Jewish Federation of San Antonio. And as a museum, we do much of the work that you would imagine. We have central exhibits that tell the story of the Holocaust. Uh, we bring in survivors who tell their own stories in person. We welcome school groups. We provide free curricula and educational resources to schools across our city and indeed nationally when the need has arisen. Um, but at the heart of what we do at the Holocaust Museum is the calling to serve as a voice for people who no longer have their own. And that can be a survivor of the Holocaust, it can be a victim who perished during the Holocaust, or even a victim of modern genocide, but we must provide the words that they can no longer say. And as we pursue this mission, we have the incredible joy of meeting individuals like Howie Nestel, like Ramiro, like Harry Mazal, who was mentioned earlier, who've also made it their life's work to promote tolerance and to fight against injustice. I'm gonna speak for just a moment about Harry Mazal, who's not here tonight. He was a great figure in San Antonio because he was a man who felt a very special calling. And he went from Holocaust site, from Holocaust camp and memorial to other memorials, to antique shops, gathering the artifacts and the items that would tell the stories of people who were gone. And he made this journey because he believed that he had to fight the rising epidemic of Holocaust denial in our country and abroad. And he thought that these stories could tell about lives that were lost and could show that there were people who were no longer here. And he treasured these artifacts and kept them as part of the Mazal Library. And it was a very special legacy. Now this year when the Holocaust uh, Mazal Library was disbanded, we had the incredible honor of taking this collection of artifacts and making it part of our own Holocaust Memorial Museum and tonight, for the first time, we're going to unveil two of those artifacts to the public and tell you a little bit that we know about the people who once wore or once carried or once used them. Um, we do this so that we hope you will imagine others whose names we don't know, whose stories we can't guess, and so that you'll come to the museum and continue learning and continue the work of people like Harry Mazal, who's no longer with us, and continue to fight for the voices that have been lost. I'm going to pick up the first artifact to show you. In our Memorial Museum for the past 10 years, we've had a replica of a uniform that was worn in one of the camps. The uniform that I'm showing you is actually authentic. This was worn by a man in a camp called Mauthausen. And if you look carefully, you'll see that there's a triangle on it. And that triangle means that he wasn't a Jewish victim. He was a political prisoner. And that means that he was put in the camp not because of his faith, but because he had a view. He dared to oppose the Nazi regime. Or maybe faith wasn't the faith that Hitler wanted him to believe. We don't know exactly who this man was because the number that was once landed on him has faded with time. But we can use the records of the camp to intuit where he may have been from and what he might have believed. What a lot of people don't know is that the Holocaust is not just a Jewish story, though certainly the six million victims who were Jewish call out for vengeance. But there were others, like this man, who were put away for reasons that he couldn't help and he couldn't change. And when you come closer at the end of the evening, I want you to look at the uniform and look at the dirt that you can still see on it. Imagine the life and the man who once wore this and what his moments would have been like. And understand, too, that the odds that he survived are slim. We don't know his name, but we know the fate of so many like him who worked hard and wore uniforms just like this, performing useless tasks that served their purpose to be exhausted to the point of death. Likely, that is the fate of death of this man. It's an incredible artifact that was collected by Harry with permission of the camp so that we could bring it here to San Antonio to teach. So too are these smaller objects in front of me. I'm going to handle them and then we'll return them to the box. This is a small artifact, but for me it's one of the most powerful pieces in our collection. For those of you in the back, it's a tiny spoon. Now this spoon might have been used for tea. It might have been used to stir coffee. But most likely it was used by a child. And we know something of the history of the spoon, because we know where it was found, in a building called Canada II, which was a storehouse. And that means that this was a spoon that was packed by a family who had been gathered by the Nazis and told they had one day to gather their most precious belongings into a single suitcase. And they would carefully pick up each object in their house, trying to decide, should we bring the things that we need, or the things that cost the most, or maybe just the memories that were the most important to us. And we placed them in a suitcase believing the lie that they were going somewhere safe, believing that they would get to use this spoon. And we know that they were loaded onto trains and that their luggage was taken from them, but that they were allowed to paint their names on the suitcase because, again, they'd be getting it back when they arrived in a new, safe home. We know that they never got this luggage back. We know that the child that the spoon was likely intended for 
was probably taken off of the camp, off from the train at Auschwitz. We know that because of his age, he wouldn't have survived that first day. We know that he would have been pulled from his mother if they deemed her healthy enough to work, or perhaps she was able to carry him to the gas chamber. But the child who was supposed to use the spoon is no longer alive. His chance of life was taken. We know too that the luggage that arrived on that train was taken and put in that storehouse called Canada Two, and there it would have sat until it could be sorted by Nazi workers, deciding which items had enough value to sell, which items they themselves might want to take into their own homes, maybe give to their own children. We know that this spoon stayed in the storehouse until the final days of the war, when the Nazis realized that they had lost, and suddenly there was a need to cover the evidence of the horrible, unimaginable crime that they had committed, and so Canada Two was burned to the ground. When you come up after our talk, I hope you'll look at the two spoons we have in this case. The smaller is darker, and that's because of the fire that engulfed it. But it survived the fire to live as a testament of one of the families who was loaded onto a train and might be murdered. I hope you'll come up and take a minute to look at these artifacts and again to imagine the people who once loved them and wore them and used them and suffered in them. And I hope too that you'll look at the brochure on your seat. We've attached in the top right corner a small gold pin. It's the Hebrew word zohor, and it means to remember. And our hope is that you will wear that pin. And when you do, you will think about the families we've talked about today, about the other victim groups who are represented by photos in the corner of the room, who were killed because they were handicapped, because of a faith they wouldn't deny, because of tendencies they could not change, because of views they would not let go of, because of beliefs they thought were worth dying for. I hope that you will learn in a moment, we're going to take a banner and lay it out. I hope that you will sign your name to it as you take this pledge. But mostly, I thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Francesca, for a most moving presentation. Um, that concludes tonight's program. I encourage you to go to the website learnandremember.org. And over the coming weeks, we will be posting a new video every four or five days about these different groups' stories. So Jewish stories, um, stories of uh, political prisoners, um, gay and lesbian uh, individuals who were targeted for, for, um, you know, for their, um, I guess, sexual orientation. There were, there were uh, people with physical and mental disabilities that were targeted for that reason. And so we, we're going to tell those stories. The first story that's on the website right now is a story of, of a young boy. I won't tell you too much about it. I want you all to go listen to the story. And it's uh, read by our, own very, our very own um, Mayor Julian Castro. Um, I also, these stories will also be on iPads that the San Antonio Public Library Foundation donated to the San Antonio Public Library. And, and here on the first floor in the public library space, there's, uh, there'll be iPads with the stories, and you can watch them there as well. And we'll have some of those iPads at some of the branch libraries in the uh, coming um, month long worth of, of events. So with that, I bid you good night. Thank you all for being here. Uh, please feel free. We'll be around if you have any questions for us. Come uh, look at these artifacts that are at the museum. And I also encourage you to come and visit the museum, which is located at the Jewish Community Center here in San Antonio. Have a good evening.